You and your colleagues know that work doesn't always go as planned. But why? That's difficult to find out. If this rings a bell, process mining might be the method to help you. Process mining aims to visualize the real business processes and to compare them with plans and theory. This provides a lot of insight and transparency. In the next 6 minutes and 40 seconds, I will explain how it works and why it's important. Reality often differs from the ideal world. This is also the case with business processes. In practice, business processes are much more complex and less structured than the documented and expected processes. Also, the way people think the business processes are conducted and how they really work differs quite often. This can be seen clearly in the example of a purchase-to-pay process. On the left side, the process is visualized as an employee described it, straightforward and simple. On the right side, the process is visualized by a process mining application based on factual data. As you can see, the real process is much more complex. The problem is that wrong information often leads to wrong decisions. Remember the 2017 Oscars? La La Land was mistakenly announced as winner of the Best Picture Award and the producer had to hand over the Oscar he just received to the director of Moonlight. The actors who announced the winner were given the wrong envelope. Bye-bye, Oscar. Wrong information can also be a critical problem in organizations. That's why it's important to recognize the gap between reality and the ideal world. But why do these differences exist? For starters, extra work. Employees devote a lot of their time to repeated work, unnecessary activities, and other types of rework. But this extra time was not taken into account when the ideal process was designed. This also harms client service, as clients might not receive the right service at the right time. First time right is certainly not always the case. Second, exceptions. Usually, business processes are described as they should be conducted according to the happy flow or sunny day scenarios. Exceptions are conveniently ignored. However, exceptions do exist, and they often require special attention to have the process flow in the right way. This means that employees sometimes deviate from the business processes as they are documented. Then there are those desire lines or game trails, named after paths that have been created by game on their shortest route to the drinking pool. In our work, we also create desire lines, often unknowingly. We take shortcuts or skip steps in the process. The actual way in which the desired result is achieved might significantly differ from the process as it was designed. However, the biggest problem is that we often have no clue how the process really works. It is almost invisible, like the giraffe on this picture. If it isn't crystal clear which activities are actually performed, it's nearly impossible to identify deviations and bottlenecks. And if the actual process flow is ambiguous, it's very hard to improve the process. So why don't we have this clear image? Everyone has a subjective view. Employees conduct their activities in a slightly different order, put emphasis on different steps, and identify different problems. During so-called brown paper sessions, organizations often try to combine all those practices and opinions as a jigsaw puzzle, but that doesn't always work well. And so, a difference arises between the processes as we view them and reality. Furthermore, everyone only sees a piece of the process. Each employee does his own work, but has no clear sight on what happens before or after their piece of the process. This way, no one has a complete image of the whole process chain. Problems at mutual transfers of work or problems throughout the whole process chain are often insufficiently recognized. On top of that, working processes change just about as often as the weather. Processes are constantly adjusted as a result of client needs, new legislation or reorganizations. Those adjustments are often not included in the process documentation. As a result, the documentation will become outdated and useless and might end up as a worthless pile of paper. Lastly, especially in IT-based information processes, it is hard to see what's actually going on. On a factory floor, it's obvious who's working and what they're doing. In an office, you see people behind their computers or working on the phone, but what they are actually doing is difficult to see. These processes are less tangible. That's why we need to visualize the real process flow. Only if the current process is clear and transparent, including all the rework, exceptions and game trails, we can really start to think about process improvements to move towards the desired situation. Without an accurate process model, every analysis will be subjective at best and pointless at worst. This process model is built by looking at all the data recorded by IT systems. The advantage of ever-increasing automation is that an overload of information is readily available. Everything is registered and saved. By analyzing and evaluating that data, we construct a clear image of the actual process flows, including the bottlenecks and deviations from the designed process. Here you see how process mining works. The business processes record data, for instance in a database or log file. Algorithms in the process mining application distill an accurate model of the real process out of all that raw data. 
Since our model is based on objective and complete data, this will provide an ideal basis to build our process improvement plans on. This is an example of transactional data recorded by IT systems during the course of the business process. In the image, a tiny bit of a huge data set is visible. It is nearly impossible to analyze these amounts of data manually. One could look at an individual case, but not at the entire population. With process mining, you can. Process mining visualizes the underlying process. Here, once more, you see an example of a purchase-to-pay process that has been visualized using process mining. In the model, we repeat and animate the actual process flow. Every yellow dot is a purchase order, flowing through the process in the order and speed in which the activities really took place. The three most important benefits of process mining are that it is objective, complete, and fast. Objective, since it's based on data and not assumptions. Complete, because we use all recorded process data, including exceptions and unknown variants. And fast, since the analysis can be fully automated and repeated at every desired moment. Usually, one uses KPIs to monitor whether the process runs well. Here is an example of the lead time of closed requests in an HR department. In 80% of the cases, a request is handled within the norm of 14 days, so in 20% of the cases, this cannot be managed and something is going wrong. But what? That's what we don't know now. With process mining, we can get to the bottom of what's going wrong by analyzing the process from the inside. On the left, you see the 80% of cases that could be handled without problems within 14 days. On the right, the process flow shows a remarkable delay caused by interaction with a specialist. This appears to be the root cause of the unacceptably long delay in the other 20% of the cases. KPIs, in fact, work like a thermometer. They can tell you that something is wrong, but not what went wrong. Just like your thermometer can point out that the heating isn't working, but not why. Process mining works like an x-ray of the process to discover its inner workings and find out what's really happening. This allows you to easily spot the true root causes of problems and bottlenecks. Hopefully you've enjoyed this presentation and learned something new from it. If you have any questions or remarks, please feel free to contact us. You may also contact us if you need help analyzing your own process. We would be happy to schedule an appointment for a demo. Thanks for your attention.